Alrighty guys, so something I've never been able to actually do until this year, but this is all the major, uh, I'm going to say for the most part, variants of the walk behind snowblowers. Now there's a, there's a few things missing here and I'll get into those whenever I get over to here. But, from left to right we're going to go here, oldest to newest. On the left here is what we consider a square chute or dog eater snowblower. And these came out, this was the first snowblower, snowblowers offered on a Gravely. I want to say, boy I, I'll be honest, I don't know when they exactly started with these. I want to say 40s. Um, I could be potentially wrong on that date, so don't quote me on that, but this was the first production snowblowers to come out with. This one here, the, the chute's been cut off a little bit shorter on. I'm not sure what the, the DPO was doing with this, but a square chute snowblower was the first style. And the main, the main thing and the main issues with these, at least that I've seen, is the reels turn so incredibly fast on these in wet snow like we have here in Pennsylvania they have a tendency to jam in wet snow and a lot of times they call these brick throwers because it'll just throw just solid solid bricks out the end like a foot uh, if you're doing real heavy or wet snow you know applications a lot especially deep wet snow that has been my thing with this I used a square chute for years and other than I twisted off two fan shafts at the safety clutches a lot of that was from the nylon nut on the back of the slip clutch that holds everything together back and off and then it, it had more torque or ability to torque the shaft and twist it off um, so a lot of the problems are, are mainly maintenance issues that uh, that I've seen. And then we segue over here into snowblower two, which would be what you call a deluxe snowblower. And Steve, what's the difference between that, that, and that? Well, two two main differences is on this style of snowblower. The housing on the back does not spin left to right or rotate the whole housing to adjust where the snow goes. On this, they fixed it stationary and just the chute spins on this. And this, it actually does work on this one. I just about tripped over the snow blower, but uh, you can see basically you put a, put a shaft back there and spin it and it in turn rotates the chute. The other main thing they did, and this turned out to be a weak thing in the deluxe snowblowers, is they changed the gears in the auger gearbox to a much finer spline gear versus what's in the square chute. The square chute has like a real deep, deep coarse set of gears and Knock on wood, I haven't seen one of those gearboxes blow apart yet. But these is pretty common. I have been into this one. I replaced the key in it. And I'm going to see what happens. I've never actually used one of these. But uh, this winter, I think this will be going on the 566. I'm going to try that out and I will let you guys know how that goes. And the main, and that was the main two differences. Was the chute setup, which helped a lot with plugging and slowing down the auger or the auger the the real speed just so it didn't feed in so much snow and there's a couple different versions of these there's uh, different style fans as you can see the style of fan that's in there is actually a later style and there's actually an early style that is similar similar to this and I think I have one in the shop and it's just straight up fins it doesn't have the angle to it like these do. I think you guys can kind of see that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and that was, this was the much better designed fan because it would take a lot more abuse. Okay, hopefully clip A from future Steve and the snowblower installment here. So tonight we're looking at square chute snowblower fans. 
in which I've just showed you the better style. And this is the first, what I'm going to call an earlier design. You can see it was just flat pieces of steel. And this one, somebody obviously bent at one time and they reinforced it with this rebar. And that definitely helps a lot. And it also helps uh, this blower never really plugged up like a lot of the early square shoots did, like I said in the videos. So, without further ado, back to past. Then we segue into the MA, well, what everybody considers the MA210 blowers. And these came in a variety of different uh, widths. And the, the model number um, changed with the widths. Like this is an MA210. I really, I really don't want to throw the numbers out. Because I'll be honest, I don't remember and I don't have them memorized exactly. But basically there's a 26... There is a 28 inch quick hitch version, a 34 inch quick hitch version, and there's also a 34 inch uh, four mount or four bolt version, like this 26 is right here. And then from there they stepped up and they went to a 38 inch blower and a 40 inch blower that would mount to the riders, or 44 inch blower, I'm sorry. And obviously the main difference between all them blowers is the fan shaft in the back, depending on what it was specced for. Like this is for a walk-behind tractor, anything non-quick hitch. And a quick hitch version would look, it's going to have a similar mounting setup to this newer style Aaron's, which I haven't got into yet place for the quick hitch, um, place for the universal joint to go on back much like the riding tractor. The riding tractor would have a shaft and a different to and a different frame to it for the lift. And ironically the three of the four snow blowers I have here all have casters on them, which is actually sought after, although I'm not really fond of casters. They do nice on my brick pass out back, but Otherwise, I'm much more of a skid shoes kind of guy, but... And with the MA-210, there was a lot of changes. They... For the most part, fixed the, the feeding issue that these two had, where they had a tendency to plug. This one, like I said, not as bad, but the gearbox was weak. Gearbox on these, you had to watch because they were a bronze gear instead of a steel gear, which both those two had. So you have to be... You have to put the right gear oil in because otherwise over time it will eat itself and I have seen that happen. Uh, at least I've seen pictures of that happening. And on these you just to shoot with a crank either from the seat or from the handlebar. This one actually has the bracket for it. Um, and on these they, they it uses a combination of the deluxe and the square chute for how the chute works. Basically what it does is it rotates the whole drum left to right and through a cable it actually, as you spin it around, it twists the chute. So these were leaps and bounds ahead of the square chute, dog eater, and the deluxe. And they actually called these and they, their nickname was snow cannons. They'll shoot snow about 50 feet um, and they'll shoot about anything you can feed through them. And these actually had separate slip clutches on the augers. Basically to tighten the clutch up, you tighten up this, this nut in here. Or right, I think you guys can see it. Right there. And there's actually friction discs. Uh, I believe they're in here or on the ends. I don't remember exactly. I've had them a part of blow ends and stuff, but I'm not in snowblower mode at this minute. So that was something that they changed because before you only had the slip clutches on the back of the blower. So you had to, the whole blower stopped. Where these, if you get something in the reels, it stops before it hits the second stage. So leaps and bounds ahead, you just had to keep them adjusted and make sure they won't, weren't froze up. Like this one here, before I ever used it, I would back that nut the whole way off and see if I could stall the, uh, stall the augers while turning the input shaft. This blower is set for, I don't know how long, it's pretty beat up too. So. 
Alrighty guys, so the f well, this is the first addendum clip I'm making to the snowblower video. But over here in the tank garage I have a, a 44 inch Radner snowblower. I figured I would at least show it. I wish I had them dug out right now, but I don't. And there's a 38 inch back here with skid shoes on it. And then I have a 38 inch up here with casters on it. As you can see, they're basically the same. The only thing that's different is the widths. And the, the reels, obviously, are a little bit longer than the reel shafts. And the other rider snowblower, which I have a picture of both styles here uh, on two tractors of mine, which I'll insert here. And on the 817 in that picture, it has a... Uh, right hand directional control for the chute where these all three of these are left handed and in my opinion the left handed blowers are a lot more common than the right handed directional chute lever or uh, rod so that's just that's just my two cents on that and I also right here have a picture of a quick hitch walk behind blower and figured it'd be a good good place to at least show some pictures of this even though I don't own them but uh, we'll at least pass it along to you guys so enjoy your regularly scheduled scheduled programming future Steve addendum out now we get into the last and final stage or the last and final blowers that Gravely made, or Aaron's made for Gravely. I want to say the, the MA-210s, I want to say came out in the 60s. I could be wrong on that, but I want to say they came out with a commercial series, is my assumptions. I have to dig around a little bit, and I'll talk to my snowblower expert, maybe, and I'll insert some dates in here somewhere if I get this figured out. So, back over here to the Aaron style snowblower, as we all refer to them. And from what I know, these came in 28, 28, 32, don't know if there was a 36 or not, but there was a 40 and a 48 version for on the riders. And I've never had a, I've never owned an Aaron style snowblower for on a rider. And this is the first walk behind one I've ever had right here in my possession. So there is a lot different from the Aaron's, Aaron style snowblower, the whole way up through here. The Aaron style snowblower does represent the deluxe. They went back to that, is what it looks like. And they also have this big safety clutch here on the reel. And for the most part, these are pretty solid and stout snowblowers. They use the same the same setup that they used on actual Aaron snowblowers, which Aaron's was what? The king of snow. So they had a big tall chute design. Again, the, uh, the whole fan housing stayed stationary and just the chute rotates. And you can do that from the operator's position. Uh, they had a cable operated deflector from the operator's position and all of the Aaron style snowblowers are quick hitch or rider. There is no four bolt to my knowledge when the Aaron stuff, Aaron's blowers came out everything was going quick hitch and quick hitches were actually coming standard on the 5000 series if I'm not mistaken but on the 5000s you could unbolt them on a pro series you cannot because uh, of the extra clutch back there and actually run a PTO. You could bolt a snowplow on it. So, that is the four major versions of Gravely Snowblowers. And I don't have any rider ones down here, but, you know, you guys get the drift. They're all pretty similar. Um, and that's that. I guess, uh, I guess I should mention about the MA-210. does have a chain back here to to angle the chute and everything there's a chain and set of sprockets back in here and like I said there's a a cable a, 
cable that wraps around back here and goes to these uh, goes to the bolts up there to twist the chute whenever you turn it side to side so that being said guys I think that's about everything the major the major updates and changes in the snowblowers if I missed anything I'll I'll try and do a uh, an amendment uh, amendment video to this and we'll go from there so all right guys thanks for watching we'll catch everybody in the next one later